Welcome to 2024. Happy New Year to the entire design community. And I'm super excited to make this video because for the past six months, I've seen the environment of UX UI design change a lot. There have been a lot of layoffs in different companies, and there have been a lot of changes in the way people look at UX designers. These are from my experience and also from talking to design studios and companies that I do on a regular basis. Number one is broader skill set or broader services. Not only are you doing UX UI design, you are also doing things like visual design, testing, graphic design, marketing, etc. Now, a lot of studios are getting clients that are asking them to give not only just UX UI services, but also other creative services with it. That means that now the spectrum of people who especially want to get into things like freelancing and client work has changed completely. As a UX UI designer, you might also have to hire somebody or learn the skill set yourself of doing things like marketing, graphic design, social media, and so much more. A generalist UX UI designer will now be forced to make bigger moves and bigger service offerings to these clients. They want people who can do more than just UX UI design now, or people who are flexible with the way they are working. This is kind of a negative that is coming in for generalist UX UI designers. Specialists are somehow saved here. To add to this, there is also a need of parallel skills. What are parallel skills of UX design? It could be product management because it, product management has a lot of overlapping when it comes to the skill sets that are required. It could even be things like graphic design because graphic design has a lot of fundamentals of UI design as well. Learning a parallel skill is basically learning a skill that is super useful to your main skill that you're trying to market. Number two has to be spoken about. AI design tools and AI design skills in general is becoming more and more important. Now, will you be asked about this in interviews? Probably no. However, if you talk about AI design in terms of speeding up and making your workflow more efficient and effective, allowing companies to save time and cost, as well as bringing more knowledge and learning to your team, this can be a big plus when you sit in an interview. Notice how I didn't say it'll replace designers, it's just gonna help us with our workflow. Just the, just the way no-code tools help developers, AI is gonna help designers. I recommend learning a little bit of prompt writing so you know how to write perfect prompts for these AI tools, as well as check out some of the AI design tools. I've mentioned some on the channel. My favorite has been Relium and Wizard till now. There are a bunch more that are being introduced, so keep an eye out for that and just keep yourself updated of whatever is new in terms of concepts in AI. There are exclusively some companies where the designers are adamant about designers like us who are coming on board on their team to know about the latest trends, tools, and techniques. If you are not in verse with these, then they might not take you or hire you for their team because you are not well versed with what is happening right now. And designers and sen senior designers, managers, etc., do look for that when they are hiring. Third one might hurt you or might scare you a little bit, but just listen to me for a second. There are more designers than ever, but there are not enough jobs to kind of match. There is going to be some difference, even though the difference is not huge, it's still noticeable when you consider billions of people in the world. Now to prove one point, imagine a room full of black and white people. All these people are wearing black clothes, their skin is painted white or gray, and everything is the same shade. And then you are there, painted multicolored, and you are wearing flashy clothes. Who will they notice? All the gray people in the room or the one colorful person in the room? One thing that is different from the others will always stand out and be given more importance. To make yourself separate from every other designer in today's world is to actually prove your presence and your skill at the same time. The best way to do this is put out your work as often as possible. And I'm not saying just put out your work on Behance, Dribble, and all that. No, try and create a way 
of showcasing your work in the form of interesting content. I'm sure you've seen these A-B testing exercises online. Now, these might not be the best way to do A-B testing, but in a lot of ways, designers are trying to popularize their designs using this method. Another way is to make videos like this on Instagram, LinkedIn, etc., showcasing your work, but masking it with important content that people can watch. So in this video, if I showed you my work and spoke about that work while teaching you guys something, you would come for the learning and the teaching, but you'll also see my designs at the same time and you'll be impressed. Imagine a recruiter comes to your video because of knowledge and information, but sticks around to see your designs and actually is impressed and wants to hire you. Isn't that fantastic? In fact, two of my jobs in my career have been through content creation. Now we all know that every platform nowadays is overcrowded, be it Behance, Dribble, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook for that matter. However, what if I told you every year there are tons of niche communities and platforms opening up? Not only do they give a better opportunity for you to become popular or to showcase your designs, they also have other people who can notice your work and give you the right kind of opportunities and help you build a better quality network. One such one at the end of 2023 was Peerlist. It's still not overcrowded. There are a lot of tech and design folks out there and it will help you build a better network community as well as showcase your work on there. It's all, it also has a good job board, internship board kind of area where you can actually check out opportunities which have not been applied to by thousands or lakhs of people. Okay, last but not the least actually ties everything together that we spoke about today. Now, where generalists are becoming not only very common these days, also have to broaden their skill sets to be able to get better opportunities. There is another segment which I even have made a video on. It's called T-shaped specialist designers. Now, these are designers which often have started from UX, UI design, a general concept, doing everything from research to design to testing. And now they have created a segment for themselves. Various companies are understanding the importance of niche skill sets and niche specializations. UX strategy, UX analysis, product design, UX writing, dedicated tester and testing and these are just some of the ones that I can think of right now. I'll put more on screen if I have more. So where the demand for generalists has either stayed stagnant or just increased a little bit or decreased a little bit over the past year, specialists have increased because the importance is now and a basic understanding that companies have. They have worked with UX designers for so long now that for them, the next step is to get people who are niche experts or niche specialists. If you can't thrive in a populated environment, thriving in a less populated environment will be better, isn't it? So it just makes a lot more sense. All right, guys, so that was it for today's video. First video of the year deserves a thumbs up so that I keep on making more content like this every week. Remember, this is my schedule. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and get notified when I post relevant videos just like this. I'll see you next time. Take care. God bless.